welcome to our channel. This is Archie the Cockatiel and I am Archie's mom. Today we're here to talk to you about everything you need to know about getting a cockatiel. So the first thing you should ask yourself is a cockatiel right for you? So there are several different things to consider before you go out and get a pet bird. Um, they do have a long lifespan. Cockatiels can live 15 to 20 to 25, or there's even some that live longer than that. Another thing that you need to consider is your living conditions. So are you currently living with your parents? Are you gonna perhaps be going to college in the future? Um, because your bird needs to be able to go with you wherever you go. You also need to make sure that if you're renting, that you check with your landlord to make sure that it's okay to have a pet bird. It's really irresponsible to um, not ask or know that they don't allow birds and then just go out and get one anyway, because on the off chance that they do find out, then you have to rehome your bird. And that's not a good situation to put your bird in. You also need to ask yourself if anyone in the home has allergies. Cockatiels release dander into the air, especially when they shake their feathers about. And if someone in the household has allergies, this could be seriously a health issue for them. So uh, you need to make sure that your cockatiel isn't going to, there he is shaking his feathers. Um, you need to make sure that everyone in the house can be comfortable having a bird. Cockatiels are a bird that does need a lot of attention, even though they are a small bird compared to a macaw or an African gray or an Amazon. Just because they're a small bird that you can get relatively inexpensive at a pet store doesn't mean that you just leave them in a cage all the time. They have big personalities for being a small bird, and they're very sweet and affectionate and love to spend time with their humans. How do you know they're all female? Does somebody yeah. go out in the park and pull up the dinosaur skirts? So when you're choosing a cockatiel, sometimes you'll know ahead of time if you're getting a male or a female. The differences between males and females are that males tend to be more vocal. They can learn to speak and whistle a little easier. Females tend to be a little bit more quiet, but it's not unheard of for females to be vocal from time to time. Um, they do say that females tend to be more affectionate than males, but I find that Archie is very affectionate. So I don't think that's true at all because he's a sweetheart. He loves to cuddle and just sit with me and fluff up. All right, so now you've decided that you want to get a cockatiel. Um, one of the next things that you need to do is locate an avian vet in your area or an exotic vet that sees birds. You don't want to get a bird and then in the future have something go wrong and find out that there aren't any in the nearby vicinity or just not knowing who to go to in an emergency. So it's important to do your research ahead of time and make sure that you know where to go if there is an issue. And you'll need that local vet, not just for emergencies, but also for checkups, nail trims, um, getting their beak filed if that's necessary. Um, if you choose to clip your bird's wings, um, you can learn to do some of those things yourself. I personally like to leave it to a veterinarian to do and let the professionals handle it. Speaking of veterinarians, you wanna make sure that you have an emergency fund set aside for if something happens to your bird. Birds are small animals, but they can be very expensive when it comes to veterinary costs. I recommend having at least four or five hundred dollars set aside in an account just in case something happens. But since sometimes things cost more than that, that's the starting point. I would say try to have between four hundred to even up to eight hundred or a thousand dollars just in case something happens. That way you're not caught off guard. Now before you bring your cockatiel home, another good thing to have on hand is a night light. Um, cockatiels are prone to something called night frights. It's where they wake up suddenly at night and they thrash around the cage and they can injure themselves very easily, such as breaking a blood feather, which is something I can go over in another video. So having a night light is a really good idea. 
Personally, I have a night light. I got it from Walmart for like $7 and it turns itself on and off depending on the ambient light, which is nice so that I don't have to turn it on and off myself because some night lights have a switch that you can turn it on and off yourself. So this is just more convenient. Yeah, <laughs> who's hungry? Also, before you bring your cockatiel home, you need to know what diet they're currently on. If they're on seeds, if they're on a certain kind of pellet, um, and then do some research, decide what you're going to be feeding your bird. Bring home some of what the bird is currently eating as well as what you want to convert them to. The conversion process does need to be pretty slow. You don't just want to switch out there. <laughs> You don't just want to switch out their food um, and not give them a chance to convert from one to the other because unlike uh, some animals, you can't just give them something and expect them to eat it. They do need some time to get used to the new food, especially if you're switching from seeds to pellets because that is quite different. It can be a lengthy process to convert them from one food to another. So personally speaking, I recommend that your cockatiel be on a very good pellet diet, um, but you also need to be able to feed them fresh foods like vegetables and fruits. Seed is okay as an occasional treat, but it shouldn't make up their main diet. Millet spray is a really good training treat when you're trying to teach your bird to do tricks or do simple things like step up. Um, you don't want to give the millet super often. It shouldn't be available in the cage at all times um, because otherwise they may just eat that instead of the other things that you're offering. Because millet is basically like catnip for birds. They absolutely love it. So millet is also a really good way to build a bond with your bird when you're training them when you first get them as well. Another tip is when you bring home your bird, you should introduce vegetables and fruits pretty early on. You don't want to save them for a surprise that you're just throwing at them later on down the line because especially if you're getting a young cockatiel, um, if you introduce it at a younger age, it's better because when they're older and you offer them something strange that they've never seen before, they're just going to look at you like, what are you giving me? What is this? What am I supposed to do with it? Um, a good way to get them to try it that I have found is if Archie sees me eat something, he has to try it. So I would recommend eating whatever it is you're trying to get your bird to want to try in front of them. Once again, because um, eating is a flock activity, um, it is something that they'll enjoy doing with you as well. I like to have a plate of vegetables from time to time as a snack, especially when I have Archie out and he'll decide to join me and usually he takes over the plate but that's okay. Another thing that you'll need to have ready before you bring your bird home is their cage. Now when it comes to cages be sure to spare no expense. Really spectacular, spared no expense. The cage should be at least 24 inches in length, 18 inches in width, Now those are the minimum requirements. The bigger the cage, the better. I recommend no uh, wider than 5 eighths of an inch for the actual cage bar spacing. If it's any bigger than that, they could stick their head in it, possibly get caught or stuck, and obviously that could lead to injury. So no wider than 5 eighths of an inch. So just because you find a massive cage doesn't mean it's the right one. You always want to make sure that you check that bar spacing as well. Don't be afraid to look around for a bird cage. Um, I don't recommend most of the cages that you can find at your generic pet stores like PetSmart and Petco. They tend to be pretty small or they try to make them in fun designs like pagoda or like a cottage style cage. And those, while they're cute, usually they're not going to be the right uh, size for a cockatiel. So I recommend seeing if you can find an actual local bird store or if you don't have one nearby, definitely look online. Look online to find a good bird cage. If you do find a bird cage online that someone is selling used, I would recommend to be careful with it. You wanna make sure that you clean it really well because you don't know what happened to the bird that used to be inside of it if they were sick or had something that could be passed along to your bird. I would recommend power washing it and be sure to use disinfectant on it as well. Now, when it comes to setting up the cage, 
A lot of cages are gonna come with a generic dowel perch. It's very uh, smooth and rounded. And those aren't the best perches for your bird because um, it's basically not good for their feet. Always having the same width, um, they don't get good feet exercise and it's not comfortable. It can also lead to something called bumblefoot. So I recommend lots of natural perches. Archie really likes his flat perches a lot. You can also get those pumice or sandy perches to help keep their nails trim. You don't want to make that the highest perch in the cage or their prominent perch because if they spend too much time on it, it can also hurt their feet. So personally, I only use those rough perches at the food and water bowls because I know that they're not spending a ton of time there. They're just spending a little bit of time so they're not constantly having their feet um, irritated. You can also get rope perches for your cage. If you do get a rope perch, you wanna keep an eye on it daily because you wanna make sure that none of the threads get loose. They could get their nails caught on it and they could um, hurt themselves. So you definitely wanna be careful to make sure that there's no loose fibers on rope perches. So with perches, when you're arranging them in the cage, you don't wanna have them all in the same um, space in the cage. You wanna have some of the perches up high, some in the middle, and some that are lower towards the bottom of the cage because you want to utilize the full space of the cage also, when you're setting up the perches in your bird's cage, you wanna make sure that you don't overlap the perches as much as possible. If some of them overlap, that's okay, but if they're constantly overlapping, then you're gonna to have to spend a lot of time cleaning those perches because they will poop on them when they're sitting on the perch above it. So I suggest that you try not to overlap them unless it's completely unavoidable. Are you gonna fall asleep? My boy. Okay, personally, I don't use rope perches just so that it's one less thing to worry about. And there's lots of other perches out there that are plenty interesting and fun enough for them to use. Also, when it comes to your cage, some cages will come with plastic cups. The problem with plastic cups is that they can build up bacteria very quickly. I recommend stainless steel cups. Even if your cage comes with plastic cups, you can remove those and you can get stainless steel bowls from stores or online that you can switch them out with. Those ones are easier to clean and they don't build up bacteria as much as the plastic ones do. Now, when it comes to putting toys in the cage, if you go to a store like PetSmart or Petco, they do have a lot of toys that are made out of plastic. And while some plastic toys are okay, you don't want the majority of their toys to be made out of plastic. I also don't recommend mirrors. Mirrors can cause aggression issues and hormonal issues, and they can get obsessed with themselves. And instead of bonding with you, they may want to bond with the bird that they see in the mirror. Mirrors are kind of a controversial subject, so if you like mirrors for your bird, I'm not saying that you're wrong for doing it. Everyone's different, and you can make that decision for yourself. So when you're picking out bird toys, um, don't be afraid to go online or go to a local bird store if you have one nearby. Don't limit yourself just to what you see at PetSmart and Petco or generic pet stores because there's lots of fun toys out there that your bird would love. Some different toys that I recommend are going to be ones that have wood on them, that have woven bits, um, palm leaves where they can shred it, little bits of paper, my birds really like toys that have cardboard on them as well. Toys that have curly plastic straws can also be fun. You just wanna make sure that your bird is not ingesting the plastic on those toys. Something else that you'll find in pet stores, online, or other places are called snuggle huts or cuddle huts. They have a lot of different names. They're made out of fabric and they look like a tent or like a nook that your bird can sleep in or against. Um, I highly do not recommend those. Those can cause hormonal issues. They're also very dangerous. Um, your bird can pick at it and ingest it without you even realizing it. They can build up a crop impaction and they can slowly die. So I know that sounds really depressing, <laughs> um, but I do not recommend those. They're very dangerous. 
even if you don't think your bird is ingesting the material, they definitely could be, so why not avoid it to begin with? Your bird is perfectly happy perching on a perch and sleeping. There's no need for a snuggle hut. See, I told you males are very affectionate. Check him out. Yeah. All right, another thing that you may want to get for your bird is a play stand, something like this I highly recommend. So when they're out of the cage, they have somewhere to play on. Um, I really like having one because it means while I'm working on homework, Archie has somewhere to sit. Um, a lot of times they have bowls on them. I just don't have the bowls on it right now. Oh, you wanna go there? They can have toys hanging from them so it keeps them busy while I'm doing homework or watching TV. Um, so they, I have several of them. I have a really large one for my African Grey, this smaller one for Archie, and then a medium size for my other birds. All right, so now for the not so fun part. With birds, they are quite messy, so you do have to clean their cage regularly. I recommend changing the paper in the bottom of the cage daily if possible. I also recommend just a quick wipe down of the cage daily as well. And then you'll also want to clean the cage more thoroughly on a weekly basis. You can also take apart the cage or take it outside and power wash it with a hose. Um, that's a good thing to do. For me, that's not possible because I live in an apartment, so I'll take them apart and clean them in the bathtub. Another thing that I recommend doing on a daily basis is checking the perches to make sure that those don't need to be cleaned off as well. Um, you wouldn't want to stand in your own droppings, so your bird probably doesn't want to either. That is one big pile. So I highly recommend using a paper towel and some cleaner like poop off or the poop dissolver that I recommended in my other video and it really easily takes the mess off of the perches. Another really good way to clean the cage is by making your own mixture of vinegar with water and some lemon. Um, I got this bottle from Target. You want to make sure that it's BPA free and you just make the mixture and I'll put in the um, description box what the ratio of vinegar to water is because you don't want to just load this all up with vinegar. Um, you want to have a um, ratio of water to vinegar in there. So I'll put that in the description box. All right, so you got your bird and you need to take care of your bird. Something I recommend when you get a bird is a scale, like I mentioned in my products I love video. Um, you can get them on Amazon. Um, that way you can weigh your bird daily and make sure that they're eating okay. It's also a good way to track their health and make sure that they're nice and healthy. When you first bring your bird home, you're not going to immediately want to assume that they're going to want to play and cuddle with you. They need time to adjust to the new environment. So I recommend for the first day or so at least that you let them be in their cage, let them adjust to the new surroundings, speak softly and calmly to them so that they can get used to you and the sound of your voice. They're in a new environment and they're going to be quite scared, so you just don't want to overwhelm them. Yeah. See, like I said, males are very sweet and affectionate. I People say that they're not, but he's definitely a male and he loves kisses. I've never had a bird that loves kisses as much as he does. Also, when you bring your bird home, they're probably going to be really quiet the first few days. It's nothing to worry about. It's normal. It's just another way that they're acclimating to their environment. Once again, because they're scared and a bit nervous, they will be a little bit on the quiet side the first few days. So don't immediately jump to conclusions and worry just because of that. Also, don't assume that your bird is going to want to be petted. 
A lot of people are disappointed when their bird, cockatiel, or any other kind of parrot doesn't want head scratches. Archie is very particular. So like I've said before, you can't just stick your finger in his face and him want to be scratched. He likes to have his face very close to mine and be petted. And then he loves it at that point. But some birds don't like it at all and that's okay. Every bird is different. Every bird has a different personality. So try not to be bummed out just because they don't want head scratches. When I had my first cockatiel, they didn't like head scratches, but they would love to sit with me, hang out on my shoulder while I played video games or read a book. Um, every bird is just different. So. <laughs> Another important command to teach your bird is step up. If you get a hand raised bird, a lot of times they'll already know this command. If you have a bird that isn't scared of you, but doesn't know the command, it's once again a really good idea to use millet as a treat. And you basically just want to offer your finger and say step up, step up, step up, step up, step up, step up, step up. All right, so I will be doing a video soon about how to tame your cockatiel. So keep on the lookout for that and our other future videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos and we will see you next time. He's just the sweetest. I don't know why anyone would say that only females are sweet. Yep. Say bye. <laughs> yeah? What's that?